Hello and welcome to another video on the graph series. The question that we are going to do today is seen as an algo to solve a lot of other questions. You will see in a lot of places people will say that let's just do flat fit algorithm over here to solve this question. So this will be sort of a sub problem to a lot of questions that you face in interviews. So I hope I don't have to explain you how important this is and without wasting any time, let's get started. Before we move ahead, I would just like to take a moment to remind you to be consistent and make sure you do not miss any videos in the graph series. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell icon you will also stay motivated and you have no idea how much your support will mean to me. There's so much of free content available on the channel. There's HLD, LLD, DSA, Advanced C++, tutorials, mock interviews and so much more. So if you think I deserve your support, please subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. And there's obviously a bunch of stuff that I cannot do on YouTube, like mock interviews, live interactive classes. So we have educourses.com. We have live courses, self-paced courses with live doubt solving support, which both of them, we have mock interviews and we have a lot planned in LLD, HLD, Advanced, C++, DSA, and so much more, you have no idea. So if you want me to be part of your further learning journey process, please check it out. The link is in the description. And now let's continue. This is the question that is given to us. We are given an image. So image is basically this grid. It is of the size M by N. Image of IJ represents a pixel value. So each point in this grid, basically all of these are basically pixels. Now we are given one source row, source column and a color. So here you can see we are given source row, source column, which is called SR, SC and one color. Now we have to perform flood fill starting from the source row, source column. Now what does flood fill mean? Consider the starting pixel. So in this example, for example, we are given SRSC is 1, 1, right? So this is the one, like the value over here is also 1 and the row column is also 1, 1. So this is our starting pixel, correct? Plus any pixels connected four directionally to the starting pixel of the same color as the starting pixel. Okay, now this can be a bit confusing. Basically, we can go in four directions and each pixel, if you see, have colors, right? So here the colors are like 0 and 1, right? So each pixel is designated with a color. So we have to see that the starting pixel has what color? And then whatever the connected pixels, if they have the same color, so same color as the starting pixel. So here the color of the starting pixel is one. We have to see the neighbors that have the same color. So basically for here, these two have same colors, right? Versus this, these two, these two have zero color, but these two have one, one color, right? Plus any pixels connected four directionally to those pixels. Basically, recursively, we are doing a sort of doing DFS, right? And we will see that which ones are connected to this one, then again, which are connected to this one and so on, right? Replace the color of all of these aforementioned pixels with color. So if you remember, we were given source row and source column and we are given a color. So what we have to do is we have to see that starting pixel. So from source row, source column, we will get the starting pixel from here. We have to start painting this with this color. So in this example, the color given is two. So what will happen? This one, I've converted it to two. Then what are the directed ones which had the color one only? So this and this, I will paint these two also as two. Then this was also connected to this one and this one, and this was also connected to this one. We will not paint zero, only the ones with the same color as the starting pixel. So this one I'm painting as two, right? So all of these I'm painting it as two. So this is called flood fill algorithm that you start from a pixel and then you start filling all the adjacent pixels with that same color. So you're basically doing flood fill. So this is how we used to fill while coloring, right? Like with crayons and all that you start picking up one region and then you start painting that. And this is essentially all of these ones is one region, like how we have been seeing islands or close islands and all, right? So these all that form one region, we are painting it with a new color, which is two that is given to us. So you can consider SRSC as the basically point of that region. Now we have to paint the entire region with the new color in very simple terms. Here it is given 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now SRSC is 0, 0. So this is the starting pixel, okay? we have to color with zero. Since the original color and the color from which we have to paint both are same. So basically no change is happening and we are returning the same thing. Now this is an edge case. Again, guys, when you see these examples in late code, it seems very easy, but you should start thinking about all of these points because in interview, your interviewers might not mention these things. So you're supposed to ask these questions that what if the original color and the color with which I have to paint 
do I have to make any change? Do I have to give any error or do I have to throw any message? Or what do I do? I just return the same with no change essentially. What we are doing over here, right? So always asking these questions is very, very important. This is what is going to impress your interviewer, especially in interviews like Google and all. You are supposed to ask this, they are expecting you to ask this. And always think about constraints also. This will give you an idea that what can be the time complexity that is expected. Coming to the intuition of this, this seems like a very straightforward solution, right? But again, guys, it is very important to note in all of these questions, it is not necessary to just use DFS. You can do using BFS also. You can use any of the traversals. So it is very, very important. A lot of people, as soon as they think of LUTFIL, they will think that, okay, we can do only using DFS and not using BFS. In this video, we'll be solving using DFS, but it is very important that you show up in the next video as well and you try to do this using BFS also. It is very, very important that you try out all the questions using all the approaches so that everything is completely clear to you and you're not confused at all. You don't have any questions. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. I am here to help you out, but I need to see the effort from your end as well. Let me know in the comments once you have understood, once you have tried out the question yourself. And now we will jump to writing the code because it is very similar to the questions that we have already done in the playlist. I hope you are following the playlist and you are watching the videos one by one. And let's get started. Starting with the C++ code, we are given the image. First thing that we have to do is find the original color, right? From where we have to start coloring. So original color is what? Basically in this image, whatever was the color at this source row and source column, that is my original color. I have to start painting from here with the color, right? And we know that if the original color is essentially same as the color that is given to us, in that case, we don't have to make any change and we can return the image as it is. So we are avoiding doing the DFS or BFS altogether. We are basically just returning from here itself. Now we can start with our DFS and for that first I am finding the size of this image. So uh, N is basically number of rows. So image ka size and M is number of columns, image of zero ka size. I could also name it as MN because it is given in the question, but it doesn't matter, just name it anything, right? And now what am I going to do? I'm going to call the DFS and what all things do I need to pass? From where am I starting? So, so source row, source column, whatever is the image that is given to us, the original color and the color with which I have to paint and then the size N and M, right? And in this DFS function, I would have actually changed the image. I would have changed all the original colors to color where all I have to change. And after that, I can just return the image itself because I have already changed it, right? So I have to write another function DFS. Do I need to return anything? No, I just need to make the change in the image. So DFS and what are things am I passing? The source row, the source column. So I'm just calling it R and C. So row column and then the image, which is essentially the 2D vector. Again, pass everything by reference. Then we have to pass the original color, the color and NMM. The main thing that I have to do inside this DFS function is that at this RNC, I have to change the color to color, correct? I would have called it only when it would have had original color and I'm changing it to color. Now what do I do? I need to go through its neighbors and how can I go through its neighbors? I am making a 2D vector and I'm calling it direction and I, I'm supposed to go in the four directions, so minus one, zero. So I have to visit all the four neighbors and how can I do that? So basically I have to go in all the four directions. So K equal to zero, K less than four, K plus plus. And I will find the new row and new column, right? So new R will basically become R plus direction of K zero. We have been doing this in a lot of questions and I hope you are used to it now. There are many ways of writing this code and if you're not comfortable with this, it is fine. But I hope you're able to understand. And now if you have watched all the videos, you should be able to understand this completely. Direction of k is essentially this, this, direction of two, direction of three like that. Zero, one we are adding in row and one, one we are adding in column. Okay, so I have the new row, new column. Uh, but obviously I have to check whether it is within the bounds or not. If I am over here, then if I go on right, it is out of bounds, right? So I first have to check that if it is safe to go to that new neighbor. So I will check whether the new row, new column that I have found, is it within the bounds or not? So for that, I am writing another function is safe and I am passing NM as well. So if it is safe to go over there, then what do I have to check? I have to check that do I need to change this color or not? How do I check that? That at this pixel, so image of this new R, new C, what is the color of this pixel? 
if it is equal to the original color only then I have to change it, right? Otherwise, I don't have to change it. So if that is the case, I'm going to call DFS again. And now my new row, new C will become my new row, new column where I have to start changing the colors. So I pass image, I pass the original color, the color and NNM. And that's it. We are actually done with the code. Let's quickly write the code for is safe. This is very similar to what we have done in previous questions. So it should be very easy for you. Please to try writing the code yourself as well, because until you try writing the code, you will not know the mistakes that you are making. It is very, very important to understand the mistakes that you are making, because when you might see the video, you might think that I'm understanding everything, but it is very important that you try writing the code yourself. So what are the conditions? Basically, R should be greater than or equal to zero. R should be less than N and C should be greater than or equal to zero and C should be less than N. Let's try running the code. Let's try submitting it. So yes, we have passed all the test cases. What is the time in the space complexity? For all of these questions, we are visiting the notes exactly once. Here also, if you have painted the pixel once with a new color, it will never have the original color again, right? So we are not going to visit that node again and again. We are not going to call DFS again and again. So in the worst case, it will be order of MN. And I hope this is completely clear. In the next video, we'll be doing this using BFS also. So make sure you do come up, you do show up, and you try all the questions with all the approaches. After this, you will have no doubt about any question at all. And please do let me know in the comment section that you have understood and done the question. And now let's come to the Java code. Coming to the Java code, we are given the image, we are given the source row, source column. So the first thing that we have to do is find the original color with, from which we have to start painting, right? So what is the original color? Whatever is the pixel in this, basically in this image, what is the pixel at SRSC, right? So we have found our original color and then we have our check that if the original color is essentially same as the color from which we have to paint, then we can just return the image as it is. We basically don't have to make any changes. We can just return. So we are optimizing over here. And now we can start with a traversal. In this video, we'll be doing DFS. So for that, first I have to find the size of the grid. It is given MN, so you can call it MN, you can call it anything. N is number of rows in my code and M is number of columns. And now I will be doing DFS. And what all things do I need to pass? I need to pass from where I will be doing it. So source, row, source, column. And what was the original color that was given to me, which is from where we have to start. Then what is the color with which I have to paint? Then obviously the image grid and the size N and M. And in this DFS function, we would have already changed the image. We would have already changed the pixels that had to be changed. So we don't have to return anything, do anything else. We can just return the image because in that image grid itself, we are making the changes. So now we have to just implement this DFS function. So do I need to return anything? Nope. DFS and I am passing source row source column. So at any time, what is my current row current column, the original color, the color with which I have to paint and this 2D array, the image and the size. So the main thing that I have to do in this DFS function is basically to paint the pixel, right? So at this RNC, I have to paint it with the new color that is given to me. And once I'm done with that, I have to visit the neighbors and check which other ones need to be painted. Right, so how do I go through the neighbors? So for that, I am again going to go to all the four directions. So creating a 2D array. We have done this in a lot of questions. So I hope you're used to it now. You have understood it completely now. There are many ways of writing this code though, but I hope you're understanding and let me know in the comments if you are or if you are not. And now we have to go through all the four neighbors and how are you going to do that? K equal to zero, K less than four, K plus plus. So we are going to go in all the four directions and we are going to find the new row and the new column. How do we find the new row? So direction of K, which will be basically two values. From this, the zeroth one will give me the row increment and then I have to go to new column. So, okay, I have to add row also, row plus direction of K zero and here column plus direction of K1. So now I have gone to my new row and new column, but I need to do what? I need to check that whether this new row, new column is within the bounds or not. Like for example, if I'm over here, if I go towards right, it is going to become out of bound, right? Over here, if I go up or right, it is going to become out of bound. So again, I'm going to write a function is safe and I'm going to check whether it is safe to go to this new row, new column, considering that my bounds is like my size of the images n by n. 
and if it is safe to go to this new row new column I will check that what was the color of the pixel at this new row new column and when will I have to change it I will have to change it only if the color was equal to the original color so I had to change only once right similarly I have to find the original color and I have to paint only the original color once so if it is equal to the original color only then I am going to paint again and I am going to call DFS recursively for this new row and new column and I am going to pass everything else as it is. And that's it we are actually done with the code we just need to write the is save function which is actually very easy. I have to just pass the four values and I have to add the check whether it is within the bounds or not. So row should be greater than or equal to zero and it should be less than n and column should be greater than or equal to 0 and it should be less than m and that's it let's try writing the code oh damn i wrote grid instead of image silly mistake sorry about that let's try running it let's try submitting it so yes, we have passed all the test cases and similar to all the previous questions as well, here also the time in the space complexity is going to be order of nm, not space complexity because we are not using any extra space, we are having like the same image we are using. So space, essentially we are using whatever space was given to us, time complexity is order of nm and why is that? Because we are not going to keep visiting the same nodes again and again. Here if you have already painted it with color, then it would not have original color, we are not going to call DFS for the same row and same column we are sort of marking it as visited by changing the color so here also the time complexity is order of nm and let me know in the comments how you're liking the series next video we'll be doing this by bfs it is very important that you show up and you try out all of these questions yourself i hope you're liking the series please do let me know and see you next time bye